Thank you to those who asked me about IVIS. We are definitely going to do a little webinar together so we can walk through interpreting the images. But before we get there, I'm going to give you a little background information because I think the more you understand about how a specific device works, what you're looking at, how it produces its images, the more that the images actually make sense when you are looking at them. So let's do a little presentation on IVIS, which stands for intravascular ultrasound. If you didn't know that, also important because that's how it gets its, its images, which is why it looks so familiar to the color scale on your ultrasound echo and like echo images. So some key points is what really is IVIS used for? So first of all, morphology assessment. So morphology meaning what is it made of? So we're assessing the components within the vessel and what a lesion of interest is made of. Of course, if there's other stuff in the lumen like stents, dissections, even thrombus, you're going to see that. But the, the purpose and why I bring this up is because I think people get IVIS and FFR or IFR a bit confused. So all of those ratios, right, IFR, FFR, CFR, DFR, those are physiology tools. So physiologically, what is going on? Are these hemodynamically significant? IVIS and OCT are morphology tools. You are looking at things. Yes, you're measuring things sometimes to help with sizing, but you are physically looking at things and figuring out what they're made of. So that brings me to my next point. The purpose of that is for PCI strategy. So I want to intervene on this lesion, but I need to know what it's made of because that tells me, do I use a thrombectomy device, an arthrectomy device, a lithotripsy device? I need to know really what the obstacle is to decide what piece of equipment is best suited for this patient. The other part of that is stent sizing assessment, right? I want to make sure I have the proper size of the vessel so I'm not undersizing or I'm not oversizing either and I'm making sure I'm getting a healthy to healthy segment, right? This is a disease free vessel. That's where I want the stent to be. And then if the lesion is here, I want the end of the stent to land in a healthy segment. This is how you confirm that with certainty versus guessing on angiography. Then how does it get its image? So it uses sound waves to produce the images. And that doesn't sound super important right now, but it is when we start talking about the things that we're looking at. So the sound waves are emitted from the transducer. So when you are evaluating images, which again, we'll do later, but when you're evaluating these, you are taking from it from the perspective of you are the transducer, you're sending out a signal and sound wave, and then you're waiting for that sound wave to come back. So how quickly that comes back or how slowly that comes back, or if it doesn't come back at all, that kind of tells you what's in front of it. So those are your eyes and ears, are there sound waves? And then each object displayed is based on its echo characteristics, which is why you see different coloration. That's how the color is determined on how quickly or slowly, or if at all, these sound waves come back. And then you'll notice everything's on a gray scale for IVIS. So you'll hear terms like echolucent, echogenic, echo bright, which we will talk about as well. Norm and that is kind of the equivalent to black, white, and gray. And what you're seeing here, this is a tomographic slice. So if you had a, a carrot and then you sliced up the carrot, you would see each of those slices or even the trunk of a tree, you could use that comparison. And when you cut the tree, you see the stump. So you're gonna see it from that 360 tomographic view. This is super great for eccentric lesions. So if I had a lesion eccentric, right? So it's not 360 degrees around the vessel, this is what you're looking at. And then you'll match that on angiography and go, oh yeah, I actually did see an eccentric lesion and you can confirm that this way. And again, certain intervention therapies are better suited for eccentric lesions than concentric, sorry, concentric lesions that are 360 degrees around the vessel. So again, that goes back to that PCI strategy. So the gray scale we keep talking about, echolucent, echogenic, echo bright. So echolucent is for what we're for the purpose of this conversation equivalent to the color black. So if you were to look at this image, what are the things that you would point out are echolucent? The center, okay? This is a little black. It's blacker than this white, right? Then you have like this hairline here which is better seen here that's black. This is black. Correct? 
and then you have some black out here, which we don't really worry about. So black means the sound waves do pass through, but they don't either they don't come back at all or they come back very, very slowly. So that is what you're gonna get with blood, lipid. So that's why the lumen, which is this, appears darker because there's blood in there. And then we'll get back to later why the media appears darker, which is what that black line is. And then here, this is actually wire artifact. So the catheter is over a wire. The wire is metal, okay? So nothing gets through it. It is literally an obstacle. Those sound waves cannot penetrate, so it goes, um, I don't know what's going on here. So you can have that black where it sees it, but it sees it slowly, and then you can have this black where it actually just doesn't see anything, and those are the ones that don't really come back at all. Echogenic is whiter. So when you look this up, it'll never say gray. It'll say whiter than surrounding areas. And yes, technically, this is whiter than this, right? So this is echogenic. That is where a lot of the plaque is going to look. You might have some whiter plaque if it has some fibrin in it, right? Some fibrous components. And then you might have some more grayscale plaque that doesn't, it's a soft plaque and it doesn't have any of those fibrin deposits in it. Then you have Echo Bright, which honestly isn't even shown here at all. So Echo Bright is like a stark, stark, bright white. When we look at calcium, metal, like the stent struts, you'll start to see that. And I'll go back really quickly. Let's just use this image for instance. This is a very, very bright white. These are stent struts, okay, which is different than some of these other whiter areas. It is just exceptionally white, which much whiter than the other white which I know sounds silly, but that is how it's described. Now, if you have like some calcium going on, that's gonna appear bright and exceptionally white as well. So for my mind, when I'm practicing IVIS, I, I do it in the black, white, and gray scale. So Echolucent is my black, Echogenic is my white gray, and then Echo Bright is my bright white. So what should appear what color? The lumen is expected to be dark, right? Filled with blood so the sound waves pass through, which is right here. The intima should be the first brighter layer. So then the other way we, I personally assess these, and you'll see when we go through examples in another talk, I go, again, from the perspective of the transducer, what am I looking at? So I'm gonna look at this black first. The next thing, the next color change I see is this bright white line. That's the intima, makes sense and then it changes back to black, right? That little thin line in between, that's the media. So why is the media black? Because the media is vascularized. It's what expands and contracts, makes blood, through the blood flow through the vessel, right? So it needs to get blood somehow. That's why it's darker, because there are blood vessels there. And then you have the adventitia, which is a little less vascularized, so it's gonna go back to that white, just like the intima. So the intima and media look, I'm sorry, the intima and the adventitia look the same, and then the media is the dark in between. The only way to know the difference of whether something's in the intima or the media is that you understand vessel layer order. You understand the intima is the innermost, the media is the middle, and the adventitia is the outermost. So when I see from the perspective of the transducer, right, I see lumen, I know it goes intima, media, and then adventitia. Oh, lima, or lima, I guess lima beans, if that's helpful for order. I need to write that down so I remember it one day. Now, another thing we use IVIS for, remember I said FFR and IFR really diagnose severity. The only exception to that is actually the left main. So historically, the left main was actually very difficult to perform IFR and FFR on. There are definitely ways now that have been established, but sometimes you do have to take like a you have to put the wire in the circ and take a measurement that way. You have to put a wire in the LED and take a measurement that way. And then you have a ramus, then, you know, it's doable, but you'll find a lot of physicians prefer to use this established way of diagnosing severe left main. They'll throw IVIS down almost always for a left main lesion. And this is why, just because it's been studied and it's been established. So the rule for left main that was established is that a left main lumen area of less than six millimeters squared on IVIS or greater than 60% stenosis is considered severe to fix or for the patient to get a surgical consult. So remember, we are measuring things here, so we can definitely get that numerical value. 
but in order for that to happen, you have to understand how to measure on IVIS. So we'll go over that. Now, in order to measure on IVIS, remember, you need to understand what the layers are because where you're measuring is important. This one I've given you an example of is a very healthy vessel. This one is a very diseased vessel, and we'll kind of do both of them. So the way you're measuring is you're gonna measure from media to media. Realistically, it's actually the external elastic lamina, but you're not really gonna be able to differentiate that all of the time. So the way that I like to teach you to practice when you're first starting is just the outside of the media or on the media itself. When you use some of the AI tools on the IVIS, you'll see they're like big circles and it covers up kind of both sides anyway. I just don't wanna make sure you're not accidentally doing the intima because if the intima is here and the media is out here, that is a very big difference in measurement. So just make sure you're always looking for that black line and that's what you're gonna measure against. Now, for a quick eyeball assessment, if you don't wanna do all the dots or you don't wanna do the draw tool where you draw around the lumen, there is an auto assessment as well that'll kind of try to guess where the media is and then you will kind of move points if you feel like it's off. But a good eyeball you can do is you see these little white dots that are in the image. Can you see those? Okay, so each of those in between is one millimeter. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a vertical and a horizontal measurement. So I'm gonna go, let's say this is the media, right? So this is the closest one. I know this is like a few millimeters. So one, two, three. And the next one's here. So that is about one, two, three point five. And then you could say if you want, I don't know, three point eight. But if you just want to do an assess a estimate, we'll say that's three point five. And then we'll do this one. Again, media is over here. That's kind of almost halfway. That's like a quarter of the way. So let's do one, two, three for sure. That's about three point five as well. Oh, I counted. Did I count this wrong earlier? One, two, three. No. One, two, three point five. And then, yeah, one, two, three point five point five, I guess. So four. I think I wrote that wrong here. This is why we do this live. I'm going to call that horizontal one four millimeters. And then the other one, three point five. But you see, there is a difference between the two. And some people say, well, which one do you go off of? Well, that's why you use the circumferential assessment. This is just an eyeball. And the only time you're really gonna do an eyeball is when you're guessing the pre-dilation balloon. You 100% don't wanna use this for a stent assessment. You definitely wanna get a, a proper tool, either the dots or the tracing, to get that diameter measurement. But for the pre-dill balloon, you just want something either one-to-one -one or a little smaller than what the lumen is when you're doing a pre-dill, which is why that tool can be good for that purpose. So now let's do this one. I know there's more going on here, but you can see some of the dots, some of them. So this is, the media is out here, so you can kind of try and trace the black with your finger. And we'll say this is, this is also definitely not a perfect circle, more oval. This is one, two, three, four point five, I'll say, four point five. Four point five, and that's in millimeters, remember? And then we'll do this other one, and we're gonna have one, two, three, four, oh, four point five that way too. For not being a perfect circle, that was pretty darn close. Okay, and then just really quick for this one, again, we're not really focusing on the lesion assessment today, but if you were, this is the black lumen. This first bright or brighter line is the intima. Out here, that black line is the media. So another point is atherosclerosis is very important, understanding that process, that between the intima and the media is where plaque develops. So all of that you see between all of these between these two circles is plaque. And you have some darker areas and you have some lighter areas, right? So some softer plaque, some fiber in there, some maybe calcium deposits here and there. But this is all that's left of the actual lumen. This is the vessel size that we were sizing, the 4.5, the 4.5. But the lumen you're left with is really only, what? One, 2.5 this way, 2.5 this way. 
Okay, depth penetration is another concept you might hear about, and that's essentially saying how far can we see. The good thing about ultrasound, think about all of the other places that we use it, right? For echocardiograms, we use it for the liver, we use it for gallbladder, different things. So it can definitely see, if you're holding an ultrasound probe outside of the body, right? It can see very deep into the body, which is fantastic. That's why like this is the vessel, but you see all of this stuff out here. We kind of ignore all of that, but you're gonna see side branches and you're gonna see veins and different things out here because it has this robust depth penetration. Okay, so for example, Boston's Opticross is six millimeters of depth penetration. Most of the books you read is gonna say the range is four to eight. That's because different devices have different depth penetration, but it matters because this is the big difference between OCT and IVIS. That's why in larger vessels like veins, iliac veins, the aorta for endovascular repairs, you're gonna, you can use IVIS because you can see. OCT has really, really great what is the word? It has really great resolution, like portrait mode on your iPhone, but it doesn't have great depth penetration. So you kind of have that trade-off. Whereas IVIS has decent resolution, but way more depth penetration. So it depends on really what you're looking for and what you're trying to assess on which tool you're gonna choose. Now, recommendations and some specifications. So coronary IVIS uses an 014 wire. So that's any of your interventional wires. It doesn't need anything special. But remember, we can use this peripherally peripherally as well for it's a different um, device different package but it does have they do have venous and peripheral devices so the peripheral ivis is a larger device that is the trade-off of some of the the bigger peripheral devices do have a larger sheath not all of them there are some below the name ones that are still 014 018 but the venous one is large and don't quote me on it, but I think it, the box says it takes eight and a half French, which doesn't exist. So you'd have to use a nine French sheath. And again, it, it's venous, so not a huge deal. But the, the good news is you can use an 035 wire, right? Bigger device, you want more support. So this is the one exception. You can use an 035 wire. So do you have to, ignore my typo, anticoagulate? Yes. Even if you're not 100% sure you're fixing, right? Let's say we're just trying to diagnose that left main, you still need to anticoagulate because if any time a wire goes into the coronary artery, you need to anticoagulate or it'll start that clotting cascade process and it'll start to clot off, um, well, really attach platelets to the wire and the device and then you clot off the vessel and you know that's not fun for anyone. The other component here is that the, your assessment is only as good as your image. So anytime you introduce something into the vessel, you could cause dissection and spasm yourself just by interacting with the vessel wall. So it is suggested, and this is for IFR and FFR too, to give some nitro IC about 100 to 300 mics. Again, IC for vasospasm. And it doesn't mean vasospasm is there, right? But you're doing it preemptively to prevent vasospasm from happening while you're doing the pullback and trying to get the IVIS where it's going. Now, that you only do that if the heart rate and blood pressure are stable, but it is one of the recommendations. Now, how you obtain your image, you're gonna go distal to proximal. So if this is the vessel and your lesion of interest is here, then you need to start down here and pull back and image this whole segment. Because remember, we're looking for normal to normal. If you wanna image the entire vessel all the way back to the left main, perfectly fine. The more information, the better while you're already there. Just make sure you don't actually miss the lesion. And that is it for the overview of IVIS. Thank you guys for my subscribers who are tuning into this. If you have any questions, make sure you go back to the group chat and ask so I can clarify anything that you had or anything that wasn't super clear during this video and look forward to more examples.